Welcome back everyone, Brett Canada here, Juice Feaster on all the social media platforms, and I'm on a mission to cleanse, regenerate, and transform one million people with the magical powers of juicing. Today, I'm super excited to do a review of three top of the line juicers that are out in the marketplace. One of my jobs, I feel, for you, the audience, is to help you level up your health with juicing and part of that job involves finding you the best juicer that fits your needs. Everyone's a little bit different. Everyone requires a, a different set of uh, requirements and needs for their juicer and so that's what I want to find for you is the best one that fits your needs. Now all three of these juicers are different styles of juicers. Uh, we've got the Breville JE98XL, which is a centrifugal style juicer, and we'll get into what that is here in a second. We've got the TriBest Green Star GSE 5000, Green Star Elite 5000. It is a twin gear, horizontal, slow masticating style juicer, and we'll talk about that as well. And then we have the Pure juicer here. This is a two-stage cold press juicer that has a first stage, which is a grinder on the left, and the second stage, which is a hydraulic press on the right. So three very different types of juicers, and it's very important that we find out all the pros and cons that go with each of these juicers so that you can make the best, most informed decision possible for your juicer. Now, I personally own all three of these juicers, I've used them all extensively, um, so I feel like I can offer a very good review of how they work. So let's dig into it. Let's start off with the Breville Juice Fountain. Now I mentioned that this is a centrifugal style juicer, and what that means is that the juicer has a spinning basket on the inside, and as you drop your produce down in through the feed chute, that centrifugal basket, that spinning basket, has blades on it that spin and basically whir the produce around as the juice is passed through a juicing screen. Now the pulp goes into this pulp catch container and the juice goes into this juice pitcher off to the side. So let's take this apart, take a look at it. This is the feed chute uh, press tool, obviously, to press your produce down got a one liter juice pitcher here, pretty standard uh, pitcher for juicing. Now we'll take off the uh, pulp chute here. This is basically where all of the pulp is captured as the, as the produce is juiced. Take it off here. Now you can see the, we'll compare all the feed chute sizes but you can see a rather large feed chute on the Breville juice fountain. So, you know, this is an advantage if you want to uh, avoid chopping up your produce too terribly much, um, and this is a way to avoid that. You can drop in larger pieces of fruits and vegetables and greens and herbs into that chute because of the larger size. So that's one advantage I see there. Let's pull off the juicing cutter. So the juicer bowl here, this is basically where the produce gets spun and the liquid collects and goes into your juicing pitcher. Just fits snugly right there in place. And this is the cutter and juicing screen. So as I was mentioning, this spins in a circular motion very quickly. Um, and you can see in the very bottom, there are lots of small uh, serrated blades here in the bottom of this basket that basically as you drop the produce down through the feed chute those blades at the bottom are cutting the produce and then spinning it uh, the juice goes through this screen pulp goes out into your pulp container and juice goes into your juice pitcher so very simple very straightforward process there let's uh let's fire this juicer up so you can hear what it sounds like when it's running. Put it back in 
release. So we've got a safety catch here that snaps into place so that the juicer will run at that point. And let's fire this up and see what it sounds like. Now there are two speeds for this juicer. Uh, there's a low speed and a high speed. Typically, whenever I use it, I almost always use the high speed. So let's take a look, see what the high speed sounds like. Definitely a little bit of noise there. Now this is the low speed, definitely a little bit more of a low hum there. Um, but here again, I most of the time if I'm using this juicer, I will use the high speed. There you go, a little bit louder. So that is the Breville centrifugal style. Now with the centrifugal style, one thing that I find with the juice that comes out of the centrifugal style is that the juice tends to oxidize a little bit faster than other types of juicers. Juicers like the twin gear horizontal slow masticating style or the two-stage hydraulic. And the reason for that is because when that blade spins so fast and the produce is in that basket, you, you do tend to get a lot of air incorporated into the juice. And so sometimes you can find some foaming, sometimes it incorporates more, more oxygen. And I find that juices, if you store them longer than 24 hours, they tend to have a less than desirable flavor in my personal opinion. That's just my experience with the Breville juicer and centri centrifugal styles in general, okay? So that's the Breville. Now let's take a look at the Green Star GSE 5000. Um, this juicer is a twin gear, horizontal, slow masticating style. Now what does that mean? It looks obviously looks different than the, the Breville. Let's first, let's take a look. Here's the uh, pusher. You can see the difference in the pusher, which is gonna make you um, believe that the chute for the Green Star is definitely smaller than the chute on the Breville. As you can see, there's just a small chute here to put your produce through compared to, let's take a look at the Breville. Quite a bit smaller feed chute size on the Green Star versus the Breville, okay? So that's uh, one major difference we can see there for, for that juicer for sure. Now, let's take the Green Star apart. Uh, we do have our on-off switch right here on the top. Uh, one thing that we do find with the Green Star is that it has a forward speed and a reverse speed. So if for some reason some produce that you're putting in to the feed chute and the, the grinder actually gets jammed, you can reverse it and that will unjam it. You can take out uh, the produce that you've put in there, whether it was a carrot or something like that that jammed it, you can take that out by reversing it. So got our collection pitcher here. This is not the original pitcher that came with the Green Star. This is a one liter pitcher. Um, the pitcher that comes with the Green Star, I believe is kind of like seven or 800 milliliters. And uh, this one's a little bit bigger, fits pretty nicely under there. I broke the Green Star pitcher and just haven't replaced it. You can get all the replacement parts for the Green Star on the TriBest website, which is a, a nice advantage there. And this is a bowl that I use to catch the pulp. So let's take this apart. So here we've got the mechanism. Here is your grinder screen, so or juicing screen, compared to what we saw here with the Breville. This is very different. It's very small, uh, definitely you know a fine mesh screen like the Breville, uh, but very different in its design. Take off the grinder. So these are the grinding gears. As you heard earlier, I called this a twin gear masticating juicer. And so what we have here are two gears that spin together. And as you feed produce 
vertically down into the machine. These grinders spin and masticate or chew up the produce slowly. These, these gears turn very slowly and then the augers then push the juice out towards the end of the uh, juicing attachment at the end of the auger and the pulp comes out the end here with the pulp shoot and the juice comes out the bottom and the juice passes through this juice screen okay so very very straightforward attachment here um, you know a small number of pieces um, they're pretty easy to clean uh, they are um, they're plastic a uh, food grade plastic for um, the Green Star. So, you know, if you're looking for stainless steel, the Green Star is not all stainless steel. Um, at least this model is not particularly. So, very easy to take apart and put together. So, when we talk about a twin gear, horizontal, slow masticating juicer, we're relying upon these twin gears that spin and grind up the produce slowly and push it out. Now, the Green Star has, the gears have three dots, uh, probably difficult to see with the camera here, but there are two dots on one gear and one on the other. You line those up and that's how you match up the gears to correctly put them into the machine. So let's put it back together here. Super simple. Very fast, put our shield back on, and there we go. So super quick assembly and disassembly, very much like the Breville. Pretty simple to uh, put together and take apart. Now with the Green Star, there are some other things that you can do with it other than just make juice, okay? Um, whereas the Breville, it's exclusively you know a machine made for juicing and that's it. The Green Star, you can actually do some other things with it. It comes with a couple of blank um, screens. So as opposed to the fine mesh screen that I showed you a second ago, this is a blank that fits where the other screen did. Um, and you can actually do grinding with this. You can grind nuts for nut butter. Um, you can put an attachment on the end other than the pressure knob on the end that comes with the machine. One that's open in the center, it has a hole in the center, and you can actually run frozen fruit through it to make an ice cream or frozen sorbets. So um, there are some additional things that you can do with the Green Star that you can't do with the Breville. So I wanted to point that out. So let's turn on the Green Star and see what it sounds like. So you can see it's uh, not quite as loud as the Breville was in terms of the noise level. It's kind of a low hum with the Green Star, not super loud, but you know it's it's not super quiet either. Um, yeah, there's reverse, pretty much the same sound with reverse as it is with forward. Okay, so there we have the Green Star Elite. Twin gear, horizontal, slow masticating style juicer, okay? So let's take a look at the pure two-stage cold press juicer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this juicer has a grinder on the left and a hydraulic press on the right. So that's what makes it a two-stage juicer. So let's take this juicer apart. So on the top, we've got our push tool here. This happens to be the maple pusher. It comes standard with a, uh, a black plastic pusher, but if you buy a certain um, edition, you can get the maple pusher or buy, buy the maple pusher. Um, and let's take a look at the feed chute. So this is the feed chute hole size. As you can see, it's definitely larger than the Green Star, probably about double the size of the Green Star, um, but not, not, not nearly as, as large as the Breville, okay? Let's pull the Breville back off again so you can see that. 
So comparing the feed chute size on the Breville to the feed chute on the Pure. Uh, the Pure is not quite as large, but uh, still pretty good size on the Pure. So that is the feed chute tray there. Now let's take apart and take, take a look at the cutter. So what we have here is a stainless steel, all stainless steel, and that's one thing that um, I really like about the Pure Juicer is that everything on the juicer is stainless steel. So when it comes to being a food grade piece of equipment that could be used in a commercial application such as a juice bar or a restaurant in the kitchen of a restaurant or a food service establishment so that actually allows this juicer to um, be approved by health departments who who approve those establishments who are serving food to others okay so this is the cutter this uh, spins very quickly and as you drop produce through it actually cuts cuts the produce up and passes it through a grid. So the grid fits in right here. And depending upon the type of produce that you are juicing, you use a different size grid. And I believe that the machine comes with eight different grid sizes. And so depending upon what you're doing, uh, you choose the grid size. Typically for me, I'm using the number 10 or number 12 size grid because I'm juicing a lot of leafier greens or celery or ginger or turmeric, more fibrous type things. And so if you use the number 10 or the number 12, those screens work very well for that. If you're juicing other things that aren't quite as fibrous, then you can use smaller grid sizes. Or for example, if you're making nut butters or sorbets, you can use other screen sizes as well. So there are a number of different options for what you can do based, uh, with the screen, based on the screen size. Okay, so this cutter does come off. This is a uh, non-serrated cutting blade here. There is also a serrated cutter that you can purchase as well. On the cutter, primarily, I almost always use the the smooth blade, the non-serrated blade. Serrated blade does prevent anything uh, from kicking back up in the tube, which sometimes can happen with certain types of produce. You, you get less kickback with the serrated blade. So those are the main differences. Uh, the smooth blade comes standard with all machines, I believe, but you can also purchase the, the serrated cutter as well. So let's put that back on here. Now, so the way this works, you drop your produce into the machine and it cuts it up. You collect it in a pulp bowl. Um, then from there, you wrap the, the pulp up into a state-of-the-art press cloth. And that press cloth full of produce that you've just ground goes on to this hydraulic press. Then that hydraulic press is... Uh, turned on, you flip the lever, the press raises and presses the produce that you've ground in the press cloth against this, the top of the machine and the juice runs out into a pitcher. It's a very high pressure press, so there are over two tons of force that press the produce, so it presses a lot of juice out of the produce. So this is a, a really unique piece of equipment. I, uh, over the course of my career, I've purchased a lot of juicers, uh, a lot of juicing equipment, both uh, from a home level and a commercial level. When I received the Pure Juicer, the, the level of attention to detail with the design and the packaging and everything as it arrived to me um, was one of the best pieces of equipment that I've ever received in terms of the level of detail. I mean, this machine really has impressed me. So there we have it. We've taken a look at all these machines and talked about the differences between a centrifugal style, a horizontal twin gear slow masticating style, and a two-stage cold press juicer. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to run some produce through each of them. So what I've done, I've got three pounds of celery and three pounds of carrots for each juicer. And so we're going to run three pounds of each through each juicer. We're going to collect those juices individually. I've pre-weighed these all out so they're exactly the same. I've removed the leaves off the celery and purchased the celery all at the same time to get the celery to be uh, as close as it can be to every, every other stalk of celery. The same with the carrots. So we've got organic celery, organic carrots, three pounds of each, and we're going to run it through each one of the machines. And at that point, we're going to take a look at the yield. We're going to look at how much juice uh, is made from, from three pounds of celery and carrots for each juicer. And just take a look to see how each of these juicers work and how they handle everything. So the first thing I'll do is I'll start off with the breville and I'll run three pounds of celery through the breville. Then I'll run three pounds of carrots through and then we'll proceed to the green star and we'll finish up the pure. So I'm gonna get the breville juicer set up here. We are ready. I'm going to press, first I'm going to press the celery on the breville. So let's fire it up. Okay, we have ran the celery through the Breville juice fountain uh, super fast, went through really easily. That's a big advantage of this feed chute and the centrifugal style is uh, you can really run a lot of produce through really quickly on the Breville. So if you're looking for something that's like super fast, um, that you don't have to chop up produce at all, the Breville's a, a nice option for that. So looks like we have just maybe under a thousand milliliters or just under a liter or right about a quart of juice for the breville, the celery from the breville. I'm going to pour that into a ball jar and uh, we'll take a look at it in a little bit. So I've got the celery juice poured out into a couple of ball jars there. I'm going to collect all of the pulp out of the Breville and we're going to take a look at that um, now and then we'll also take a look at it compared to all the other juicers after we finish. So I'm going to get a bowl and collect the pulp and then we're going to run the carrots. One thing that I notice with the Breville, uh, we can see a fair amount of chunks of actual celery in the uh, pulp itself, which makes me believe that we didn't juice all of it. So that's one thing to pay attention to on the Breville pulp here. Okay, all of our celery pulp is out of the machine and the juice is collected. Now let's run some carrots through the Breville. just ran three pounds of carrots through the Breville and it looks like we've got um, take a look here it looks like we've got about 700 milliliters or two-thirds of a liter of carrot juice beautiful juice here carrot juice uh, one of my favorite juices and it's also a really great juice to blend with other other uh, fruits and vegetables and herbs just a lot of great a lot of great benefits with uh, fresh carrot juice for sure. Beautiful juice there. One thing I'm noticing with the Breville, uh, I'm seeing a little bit of foam with the juice, so something to take note of there with the Breville. Now let's get the pulp out of the Breville. We do see uh, a, a few whole chunks of carrot. Uh, still left in the pulp. Uh, maybe not quite as many as we saw with the celery. So here again, that's making me think that we didn't completely juice all that. So 
something to keep in mind there. So let's fire up the Green Star Elite 5000. Let's run the organic celery through first and then we'll finish up with the carrots and see how it does. So with the Green Star, as you're juicing, there is an adjustment knob on the outside of the, of the pulp ejection area. And this is a back pressure knob that adjusts the pressure, the back pressure on the pulp as it's coming out of the machine. And by tightening this and loosening this, you can control the amount of juice that's extracted and for different types of fruits and vegetables you need to loosen that or tighten that. For softer fruits like grapes or apples or pears or things that are a little bit softer, uh, melon typically I loosen that out quite a bit and for things like celery or hard roots and fruits I typically screw that in uh, clockwise to tighten that back pressure knob up. There's a spring on it that uh, puts pressure onto the produce as it's going through the grinder. Well, let's juice some celery. Okay, that's all of the celery through the Green Star Elite 5000. Let's pour that out into a mason jar and see what we got. Uh, you can see the pulp here um, looks pretty similar to the uh, to the Breville pulp so far. Let's pour the juice out into a pitcher here. So one thing that I see as a difference between the Breville and the Green Star juice is that there's a little bit more foam and a little bit lighter color, which I think has to do with a lot of oxidation and air bubbles in the Breville juicer juice versus the Green Star. If you look at it, it's a little bit darker color and there's really no foam on top. So that's one difference that I noticed between the two. Looks like a little bit more juice. Um, Produced not much though with the Green Star compared to the Breville on the celery. Now let's run three pounds of carrots through the Green Star. Okay, that is all of the three pounds of carrots through the Green Star Elite. Let's see how much juice we got with three pounds of carrots. So it's going to be pretty close to the Breville. Stack these up side by side. Um, actually, it kind of looks like the Green star on your left. This is the green star and the Breville in this hand. Looks like we do have more liquid in the green star and quite a bit more foam with the Breville, which is what we saw um, with the celery juice as well. So the pulp looks pretty similar with the green star and the Breville. Um, although it looks like we got a little bit more juice out of the Green Star on carrots. All right, let's move on to the pure two-stage cold press juicer. Okay, we're going to start off with the celery on the pure juicer. Since it's a two-stage juicer, we're going to run the celery through the grinder first. Then we're going to wrap it in the press cloths and press it on the hydraulic press. We're using the number 12 grid um, right now here in the cutter, underneath the cutter. 
just so that you know the grid size that we're using for the celery. So let's juice some celery. One thing that we do after we run about a pound of celery through the cutter, we actually do what's called shaving off the grid. This kind of clears off the grid and so that it doesn't get clogged. Sometimes people think that uh, the grid gets clogged and they have problems with it, but if you just move this grid tray back and forth, that kind of shaves off that, that clogged fiber. That allows you to continue juicing without doing any, any kind of cleaning or anything like that. One other point with the uh, grid here on the Pure Juicer. Uh, when you clean that grid off, there's a little slot back there that gets a little bit of fiber material in it. So shut the machine off and you can use a, uh, a chopstick or in this case I'm using a stainless steel nut shell picker that you would use to pick nuts out of a shell. Works really well. You can grab that, slide right in there and clean out that, that grid. That allows you to get everything out of the cutting area there so that you're pressing all of the produce out and getting all the juice that you need to get. So here is all of our ground up celery after we ran it through the first stage which is the cutting stage. Now we're going to finish up with the second stage which is the hydraulic press. For that I have a juice tray, just a little baking dish here that I uh, put the press cloths in and then I scoop the pulp into the press cloth, fold it up in a tic-tac-toe fashion, put it on the press, and press it out. So let's do that next. So here's the press cloth. These are state-of-the-art textiles that are designed to make a completely pulp-free juice. So whereas the other machines, you're running the juice through a fine mesh screen, this is actually a super fine um, cleanable, reusable cloth, and I'll talk about how to clean those in a second. So basically, uh, I take about a cup and three quarters approximately and put it in the center of the cloth, fold that like so, kind of tuck it in underneath like this, fold it like so, and over in a tic-tac fashion. Put it on the press, turn the machine back on, and at this point there's a lever on the right which turns uh, the press on and raises it up, and as we start to press, I slow the press down until it begins to press the juice out, and then we turn it all the way up and really press the pulp out uh, up against the top of the machine. We run that until the juice breaks, which is the stream starts to drip versus run in a constant stream. So it takes it just a second here to press all of that out. Now while that's pressing out, uh, the way you speed things along, you start filling up your next press cloth. So while that's pressing, looks like it finished. While that's pressing, you typically start filling up your next cloth. By the time this press cloth is finished pressing, you're ready to put the next one in on top of it. And you can put three or four of these in on top of each other, as long as they're not too full and they don't start running juice out over the side of the press tray, okay? And I like using a tray to put the uh, pulp in the press cloth because there's juice that runs through the cloth. You can see it's already pressing through the cloth. So if we just had this on a countertop, there'd be juice all over the countertop. 
So by using a baking dish or a casserole dish or something like that, you can capture all the juice and not lose any. take a look at the pulp on the celery here after we pressed it in the press cloths. So after pressing three pounds of celery, this is what we have left. This is pretty crazy to see how compressed and how dry this pulp gets. It really boggles my mind every time I see it. Um, that Two ton press, just it's all it's all that's left is really the the fiber that we've pressed out. Okay, let's take a look at the yield on the pure juicer. Um, we're setting at about 325 milliliters, um, you know, a third of a, a liter here on the uh, pure juicer, and we're looking at about under about 190 milliliters on the Green Star, so we definitely uh, had quite a bit more yield on the Pure on the order of, you know, three or four ounces more juice out of three pounds of celery. So uh, definitely a yield increase there with the Pure. And compared to the Breville, um, you're looking at about 150 milliliters and uh, just over 300, 325 with the pure. So definitely more yield on the pure juicer. And so we can see the definite advantage of using the press cloths and the hydraulic press. So let's press the carrots now and see how we do with the carrots. up the carrot juice on the pure two-stage cold press juicer and I think we got quite a bit more carrot juice matter of fact I know we got quite a bit more carrot juice from the pure than either the green star or the breville okay so let's take a look at the pulp from the carrot juice on the pure so here is kind of tough to show it but it's just super crumbly uh, super dry Pay, almost paper-like pulp here. I'll put it on a saucer. We extracted a lot of juice out of the carrots. So very dry, very paper-like packed pulp there from the carrots. So now let's take a look at the juice yield. So I couldn't fit all of the juice into the ball jar. Just looking at them side by side, um, you know, we're at uh, just a little over 600 milliliters with the, with the Green Star. And uh, just right at 600 milliliters with the Breville with a bunch of foam. So 
A little bit more out of the Green Star than the Breville and no foam on the Green Star. But let's take a look at the extra juice we got out of the Pure. So this is a full liter up to the top, actually probably over a thousand milliliters. And then I ran out of ball jars, so I've got the rest here. So without measuring this out in a volumetric flask or a beaker to see exactly how much we got, we got a lot more carrot juice for sure um, on the Pure than we did off of the Green Star or the Breville. So substantial amount of juice. Now for fun, I'm going to take the pulp from both the Green Star and the Breville and I'm going to press it on the second stage of the Pure Juicer to see what juice comes out. Okay, what I did there, I actually went through and pressed the pulp that was left over from the Green Star and the Breville from both the celery and the carrot. I pressed it on the Pure Hydraulic Press, so wrapped it up in the cloth and pressed it. And it was amazing the amount of juice that actually came out of the pulp. This is the amount of juice, it's about eight ounces of juice that came out of the pulp from the Green Star. And uh, over eight ounces actually topped off this glass from the Breville. So we're probably at about 10 ounces right there from the measuring cup. I did the same on the celery. This is the extra juice that I pressed out of the pulp from the Green Star. Uh, it was about six ounces, and also about six ounces came out of the pulp from the Breville. So left over in the pulp of the Green Star and the Breville was quite a bit of juice. In the carrots, it was the most eight and ten ounces, eight from the Green Star and ten from the Breville, and looking at pretty much equal uh, six ounces coming out of the Green Star pulp, celery pulp, and six ounces coming out of the Breville celery pulp. So quite a lot of juice left over in the pulp from both of those two juicers. And so I've got all the juice lined up here. I've got the carrot juice, these two glasses from the Pure. That's the yield that we had from the Pure, obviously the highest. And um, then followed up with the next highest from the Green Star and the lowest yield plus a little foamy on the Breville, and very similar results with the celery juice. Uh, quite a bit more here, about four ounces more uh, celery juice from the Pure two-stage uh, juicer, and um, pretty similar amounts uh, on the Green Star compared to the Breville, although the Breville is quite a bit more foamy. So now, let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these. What I like about the Breville, the Breville is super fast. You can run a ton of produce through it really quickly. And if that's something that you're interested in, then I think the Breville is a great juicer to take a look at. Right now, at the time of the filming of this video, um, the Breville Juice Fountain is about $149. Uh, I only was able to find that it has a one-year warranty on it. Um, so in, unless somebody can find that different and put it down in the comments below, I could only find a one year warranty for it. So super fast. I don't recommend drinking the juice um, stored longer than 24 hours from these juicers because of the oxidation uh, with them. Um, with the Green Star, uh, one thing to keep in mind with the Green Star is that if you watched when I was uh, pressing the produce through the feed chute, it takes a little bit of force to press it down into the twin gear. So if you have any issues with upper body strength or you feel like that might be an issue for you, that is something to consider with the Green Star. The feed chute is a little bit smaller, so everything that I juice today was able to fit into the feed chute, but if you're juicing large cucumbers or large chunks of apples or things of that nature, you are going to have to cut them up a little smaller to fit into the feed chute. Um, you know, advantages, we see that the twin gear is giving us more yield than the Breville. Uh, there, are, there have been some studies that show that there's a little bit greater nutrient activity in slow masticating juicers like the Green Star, so increased amounts of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, which 
that's a good thing. We're all juicing for our health, and so the more of those concentrated nutrients that we can uh, flood our bodies with, I think the better. So the Green Star has been shown to do that. Um, it's a little bit slower to feed things through, so do take that into consideration as well. Now, let's talk about the Pure. Uh, the Pure is definitely the most different in terms of its process compared to these other two juicers where they're more of a single stage, you pass it through, the machine does the work all in one pass. Uh, the Pure is a two stage, so as we said, you run it through the grinder, wrap it in the press cloths and put it on the hydraulic press. However, it's very evident based on the yield that uh, the Pure Juicer is definitely the best in terms of how much juice you're going to produce. So we're looking at about four ounces more of carrot juice and uh, three to four more on the celery juice. On top of that, we can look and see what we pressed out of the pulp of the other juicer. So definitely a uh, main advantage of the Pure is that you're going to be getting a lot more yield. I didn't mention the price on the Green Star. The Green Star at the time of the filming of this video was $629. Uh, it comes with a 12 year warranty, so quite a bit longer warranty than the Breville. Um, and the yield obviously quite a bit, quite a bit better than the Breville. The pricing as of the filming of this video for the Pure Juicer, the base model is $2,095. And um, you know, that's quite a bit more expensive than the other juicers. However, if you are juicing very consistently, if you're juicing a lot, if you're juicing gallons like I do, the produce cost savings alone in getting 20 to 30 percent more yield on average will really end up paying for the juicer over the long run. Now, if you're just someone who juices every so often, the Pure Juicer may not be something that you would be interested in, in, uh, in digging in with, but if you're juicing very regularly, if you're juicing at a restaurant or you're juicing at a juice bar where yield matters, um, I think the Pure it would be a great option. The process is a little bit different. It's no more difficult. It's just a little bit different with the press cloths. I feel like all these juicers are um, equally the same in terms of the cleanability and cleaning them. The Breville, I feel like, has a few more nooks and crannies to clean, um, uh, as does the, the Green Star. Um, with the Pure being all stainless steel and very minimal parts, it comes apart easily, cleans easily, stainless steel cleans very well. Uh, you do have to clean the press cloths, which is an additional step with the Pure. The way that we clean those, we actually soak those in some hydrogen peroxide. If you're juicing daily, uh, typically I'll clean them uh, once per week. You soak it in some hydrogen peroxide, rinse them out very well, and then um, that sanitizes them. On daily use, basically we rinse them off well with water, wring them out, fold them up, press them on the press, on the hydraulic press that presses the water out, fold them up, put them into a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer and they stay fresh until you're ready to use the next day. So there you have it, a comprehensive review of a centrifugal juicer, a twin gear, horizontal, slow masticating juicer, and a two-stage cold press juicer by Pure. It really comes down to what you're looking for in a juicer. Are you looking to juice super fast? Are you looking for something that gets you a better yield than a lower end juicer and a little bit better nutrient extraction and works a little bit better with greens? Then the Green Star might be the best option for you. But if you're looking for the highest yield, the highest throughput, with the highest amount of nutrient extraction, enzymatic activity, the Pure is definitely the way to go. There has been a study done that compared a centrifugal, a twin gear horizontal, to the two-stage cold press juicer, and it has been shown, based on the ingredients that they juice in that study, it has been shown that the Pure had the highest level of juice yield as well as enzymatic activity in that study. So, 
Thank you so much for tuning in for this comprehensive review. It really comes down to what your interests are and your needs are with juicing. No matter what, the best juicer that you can have is the one that you use consistently, whether it's a $150 Breville, a $600 Green Star, or a $2,000 Pure. If you do not use the juicer, you will not reap any of the rewards from having the juicer. So until we speak again, I encourage you to make lots of juice, drink it all, and stay juicy. Cheers, my friends. Mm. Love the carrot juice.